Welcome back to Edinley for our latest episode of Box 2 in partnership with Best Western Hotels GB, supporting local, proudly independent hotels. Welcome back to Box 2, myself, Jamie Jones Buchanan, for this another weekly roundup in partnership with Best Western Hotels. And I am joined this week by the youth development guru, John Bastian. John, great to have you. Uh, usually we look back at the previous game against Salford. It wasn't a great result, not a right lot to get excited about. But actually, when you look through the lens that you will look through, uh, we had 10 of our players that night came through the youth development system, you'll have been really happy about that, wouldn't you? Well, I think we all are. You know, the, the way the, the young players have progressed, you know, through into the Rhinos first grade, you know, over the last, not just this year, yeah. it's been the last, you know, many years. But you can see, you know, that the hard work that's going into them, you know, over the last maybe four or five years. And there is a rebuilding structure going on at Leeds Rhinos. But to see 10 homegrown players playing in first grade against Salford, you know, that's credit to everybody. And the fans love that. The fans want to see homegrown players, you know, being introduced gradually, you know, to the first grade. And uh, I think there's a lot more to come over the next few years. And it's not just Leeds, is it? We've serviced Super League for many years, produced a lot of the young players that have come through the system. And I think particularly Callum Watkins, Tyler Dupree, on the other side, come through our system. It must be as well gratifying, even though they're on the team, for somebody like yourself to see that happening. Well, it is. You know, you look at you know, you look at Callum. You know, he had a remarkable career. You know, at Leeds Rhinos. You know, obviously playing for England, playing in World Cup final. He had a short spell, you know, in Australia, and he's come back and reinvented himself. You know, in back row. You know, down there at Salford and. Uh, He's playing some great rugby league at the moment. I think he's 31 now, is Callum. You know, he's been a great pro uh, and he's probably got another good three, four, five years left in him if, if hopefully, you know, he stays injury free. Uh, Tyler Dupree's a, a really interesting one. Yeah. You know, a late, probably a late, a late developer coming in to academy at Leeds Rhinos. He uh, came from, uh, I think it was Halifax, Halifax College and... Simon Bell brought him across on a trial. Look what a trial does, you know, just yeah. look what an opportunity does. And it's not just all about throwing money at players, you know, he took advantage of that, did Tyler Dupree. Uh, he came through the system here at Leeds Rhinos. He went away. I know he played at, he played at Oldham under Matt Diskin. Uh, then he went to Widnes. And now he's having a great career at Salford and he's played for England and... I think it's 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 really important, you know, that players look at what Tyler's achieved, and yep. it's, there's a lot more to come from Tyler Dupree. And you look at where he is now at Salford, and you've got to give him a lot of credit because he's rolled his sleeves up. You know, he's worked hard. He'll have gone through some tough moments, you know, but he's found a way. Well done to him. And I love the fact they come through with Tommy Allroyd as well. They were, they were almost symbiotic, weren't they? But took completely different paths and I think there's a good lesson in there in perseverance and resilience in any career because they're all different, aren't they? Yeah, I think careers are, careers are about opportunity, Jamie, yeah. you know, and, and where you want to be, you know, whether you're, whether you're 15, 16, 17 or 18 years old, it's how hard you're going to work, you know, it's what you want to actually put into, you know, your, your efforts, your commitments, you know, to get you to where you want to to be. Um, contracts, sometimes it, it might be a terms and conditions contract, might just be a basic contract that they start out on. Uh, further down the track, financially, you know, they'll earn, yeah. you know, good money. But I think it's important, you know, that at a certain age, you know, they're, they're actually still developing, they're progressing. And to get the very best out of each, out of themselves and each other, you know, they've, they've got to be committed, they've got to work hard, it's got to be effort, but they've got to have a real passion for rugby league. And uh, Leeds Rhinos have always had that DNA, uh, and long may it continue. Context is always king, and it takes time development as well um, before we you know, reach our prime. And I'm just looking back in here, and I, and I say this because everybody wants to see a winning Leeds team. And it's been a few years since we've won a trophy, and I think back to my cohort, my generation of players, which gets referenced quite a bit, but people are, are quick to forget as well that that group took a long time 
to bear the fruits of the early labour of coming through as young kids. So, look, Kevin Sinfield made his debut in 1997, Danny Ward 99, Chef Walker 2000, uh, Rob Danny Mags, Matt Diskin, Calders 2001, uh, myself, I was uh, 99, Ryan Bailey, Richie Mathers 2002. These are all players that you've seen coming through, new as young kids, but it was 2004, in some cases, four, five, six years before we got any silverware. And it does take time, doesn't it, John? When would you expect some of these young players in our team right now to start to reach their prime? Uh, it, again, you know, I think when, when a, you gradually introduce players, you know, to the first grade, you know, through at the moment, you know, it's the under 16s, they progress to the under 18s, and then it becomes the reserve grade. They may then go out on loan, you know, to championship and then you start drip feeding them in, you know, to the first grade squad. And when they're, they're mentally ready, yeah. when they're mature enough to be ready, and obviously, you know, when you've when you built the talent, you know, to a level, you know, that they can handle, you know, playing consistently, you know, within a first grade environment. And not that's not just playing, that's training as well. You've got to remember that, you know, young people need a, a lot of nurturing. You know, they're not adults. You know, they're still young men. They still have little immature areas. They've still got areas, you know, to fix up and tidy up. But when they get to a certain level, you know, that all those start to come into place and start to fix up, then you can start to play them a little bit more. And I don't think there's any rush at all. I think the more you rush a player because, yep, yeah, he's got talent, we want to get him in there, we want to show him off, I think then you're doing him a little bit of a disservice at yeah. times. And yeah. they can become susceptible, you know, to injuries. You know, the, the mental side of what they're having, what they're being introduced to is a real challenge. So you've just got to be careful on that side. I've seen a lot of players become victims of their own success, too successful, too early. Um, I've got four boys, all play rugby league, oldest two at a scholarship at the Rhinos, no expectation other than they go try their very best and enjoy uh, that journey. I can't think of a better guy that I'd have them under the tutelage of than John Bastian. They played uh, over at St. Ellen's and got a, got a win as well. Now, it's not always about the win, but I remember coaching the likes of Steve Ward and, um, and uh, Liam Sutcliffe and a few others, Brad Singleton, and going over to places like St. Ellen's was really difficult because they always started quick, so that's really promising. Obviously, before the Salford game, our 18s put Castleford to the sword as well. Looks like we've got a lot of good young players coming through the system at the minute. There is, there's a, there is a, there's a wonderful, you know, stream of players, you know, coming from the under 16s in the under 18s, um, reserve grade players, you know, that are already, you know, developing in the first team, and it's an exciting time, yeah. you know, for for Leeds Rhinos, and the quality of the players will only get better. Athletically, you know, they're very good. Talent-wise, they're really good. They're good lads as well. I think that's important, Jamie, you know, that, that they are good, honest people, you know, different characters, for sure. Uh, but, you know, setting themselves, you know, good basic standards, you know, that can take them, you know, you know to another level. But that has a big input, you know, on your, on your culture, your club, you know, and our, our team... Um, actually come together yeah. and create an understanding of each other supports the success you know that you get I'm sure you've experienced that a fair bit you know over years as well it's a holistic approach isn't it the, it's not just about the X's and the O's the tactical and the technical it's about that mental development physical me and you have a lot of conversations about the quality of athlete as well young people take time to develop is that what you get excited about, that particular challenge? Because I was going to ask you the question. You're as revered and respected as any um, Super League full-time first-team coach. What is it about your role that you enjoy and why have you never pursued to be a first-team or even a Super League coach? I think, I think some... I think I... You know, I tried it at Featherstone, you know, at Featherstone Rovers, yeah. you know, and I thought, I want, to have a, I want to have a go at coaching at that next level and challenging myself, etc., and I think I'd more or less been designed, and I enjoyed it at Featherstone, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, it didn't quite work out, you know, for various reasons, you know, but I actually, I was still a youth coach when I think, when I think back, right. you know, with them, them really structured 
honest standards, you know, that probably didn't fit, you know, those working lads, you know, over at Featherstone. So I'll I'll take that one on chin. You know, so the more I look look back at how I've been designed, you know, to work, you know, with, with junior players and set good standards, you know, not just to the, the players, but also, you know, to the staff that I work around, allowing them to be who they are, you know, yeah. and allowing them, you know, to develop as coaches and same with players. But the fundamentals of making sure that we do things right, consistently, you know, that we have um, a specific way of doing things. So in other words, making sure we've got a rounded person, yeah. making sure we've got a great athlete, Within that great athlete, then we can start to see, you know, the talent, and that's up to the coaches. Then you know to make sure they they get the small detail right to make a difference. You know, to performance, the te- the technical and tactical side of things that builds over a period of time. You know, and uh, eventually they'll get a, a broader understanding of the great the game, their position, and the role they play within the team. But I th- I think. For me, Jamie, it's always a small detail, yeah. and usually you can find with an individual, it might only be a couple of things that you need to pinpoint that can make all the difference, and it's rec- being able to recognise that that's probably the most important thing. I think grand finals are built on youth coming through and the culture around some of the young people as well that make up a club and make the club what it is. When you're looking to identify talent and in particular young players, what are some of the key characteristics that really stand out as to whether somebody's going to be a good player or not? You watch, uh, when you go out, Sam Bell, you know, Barry Evans, you know, and we've got two new scouts have come on board as well. And when we go out and watch games, you know, you're watching, you're watching for characteristics more than anything. Characteristics of the individual, the person, the work ethic. Yeah. You know, and, and how he actually, how he actually conducts himself on the field, how he supports his teammates, um, how committed he is to rugby league, the talent off the back of that always shows up, and from time to time you just see somebody and you go, wow, uh, and and you know instantly, but then there's other players that you've you've got to be a bit more specific with and you've got to look a little bit closer and you've got to go again and again and again to watch them and then you start to see a picture of actually the type of player you know that you're actually looking at and you're hopefully going to get on board at your club to further develop them. Looking at some of the harvest, there's different fields from which you can pick some of these flowers. Ned McCormack we've just got from Rugby Union, we've got a couple of lads with an opportunity from Lee's Beckett's University. Back in the day, schools rugby league was a good place to find talent. Unfortunately, the game isn't as strong anymore. They were laying quite a lot on community clubs. But where are some of the real gems places that you like to look at to spot that talent? I think I think we obviously focus quite heavily, you know, on on West Yorkshire yeah. and um, staying. You know, there's there's Leeds, there's the Halifax area. There's the Dewsby area, you know, Castleford, Wakefield, you know, over in Oldham, you know, Rochdale. There's, I'm going a little bit beyond West Yorkshire there, you know, but you watch teams come in, yeah. and you, but you focus on the teams, you know, around, you know, Leeds. Um, I think, I think if I'm if I'm brutally honest with you, you know, whilst we do focus heavily, you know, on the community game. We also, you know, look look at the rugby union game and the rugby union pathway as well. The rugby league pathway is the most important one. Then we look at, you know, rugby union games and there's a certain time of year when we can go to them and spend a bit more time on them. We also look at, you know, teams, you know, that play against Leeds Rhinos. You know, we take notice of the opposition and players that may become available further down the track. We look in championship. You know, for young players, you know, and even some that are maybe getting to mid twenties that have maybe gone to championship, not quite been ready, you know, to get into Super League, yeah. And they've uh, they've actually kicked on really well. 
I think it's uh, it's in, I think it's important that we go beyond a little bit from West Yorkshire. We've now got Peter Farrell, you know, doing a little bit of scouting for us in North West, and he covers rugby league and rugby union there. And in the North West, Cumbrian sides come down and play in there. So we're we're pretty much we're pretty much covered. Pretty much covered. It's I think talent ID, you know, is looking looking at everything that's available, and and I'll I'll include, you know. You know, young players from France as well. You know, there's some uh, there's some talented kids in France. Uh, I think Tony Smith, he commented on you know the 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 amount of quality players, junior players there are in France, but they do probably need you know they need some probably some resource and finance spending on them. Uh, and I think there's an abundance of players there. You know that can be involved in rugby league, not just in France, you know, but beyond and in, in Super League as well. And and London's a wonderful area. London is a wonderful area, you know, for talent. And, you know, I'll mention it really quickly, you know, they, um, at one stage, you know, going back not so such a long time ago, they had, I think they had 10 development officers. And I know, I've known a few, a fair few of the staff that have worked down there, some terrific players. You know, McCarthy Scarsbrook, he's yep. one that, you know, came out of there. He's been a, a real talent, you know, for St. Ellen's. McMeekin, you know, over at Catalan, another quality player. You know, and it's an area that I think they're down to only a couple of development officers now. We've got to find a way sure. of making sure that these areas, you know, are looked after, that they are invested in, that they get the right resource and it gives them every chance, you know, to nurture and develop players not just you know for London, but for rugby league, and that's a, a key area, you know that the rugby football league and SLE have got to look into. It's the, very important for the game. Certainly is. I think about Dan Sargis and some of the services given to rugby league. Capius Paul as well. We're going to play. You mentioned Peter Farrell, obviously doing the dad of Andy Farrell doing a bit of scouting for us there. Big Wigan connections. Got Wigan this week. Wigan's another team that invests heavily in its youth, isn't it? And uh, had a lot of joy, a bit like St. Helens as well. Those teams that invest in the system seem to have um, a fair run of success. Thinking about likes of Harry Smith, Liam Marshall, um, one or two others that have come through the system. They're going to be a threat and they've been good inspirational in that sense, haven't they, Wigan? Always been good. Um, them and St. Helens, uh, Leeds Rhinos, yeah. always led the way. Yeah. You know, in regards to youth development, and they have always invested significantly, you know, in youth, you know, in staffing, in facilities, the resource around that, which makes a big difference, you know, to players progressing. Yep, it's there are strong, the, the strong beds of rugby league for sure they are, you know, but we've got to get more clubs, you know, doing this, you know, consistently, Jamie, because. It, it it just supports the game so much, you know. Don't dip your toe in, get in there and develop them kids and give them your all because it makes such a difference, you know, to your club and the game in general. But both Leeds fans are at John. Uh, we have a lot of chats about some of our uh, best players up back of the old proverbial fan packet now and again at coaching, at training on a Wednesday night waiting for kids. Next couple of weeks we've got Wigan twice, once in league, and then. We've got them at home at Challenge Cup, both two very different competitions there. How do you see that going? How would you approach it, the battle there, John? Big challenge, isn't it, this week? Whenever you play Wigan, you, you from minute one to minute 80, you've got to be competitive. Yep. It's the way they are. The football side of things will take care of itself, but you physically, you've got to go meet them because that's what, they're going to, that's what they'll do to you. Then they'll start to play, but they will physically, you know, challenge you from minute one. And that's all grades, is that. And that's what we've got to do. Within that, from minute, from minute one to minute 80, yep. you know, you've got to give your all effort-wise. You've got to be committed. You've got to be football smart as well. There's no reason, you know, why we can't go there and perform, you know, on Friday night. And there's no reason why we can't perform against them in Challenge Cup. Challenge Cup a week on Saturday either. Some good memories for you in Challenge Cup against likes of Wigan. Obviously back at Edinburgh, it'll be great. The atmosphere has been outstanding throughout this season. 
I'm really looking forward to both games, but the Challenge Cup's always got that extra tinge of specialness, hasn't it? Well, it is. It's there's. I think there's. Is it three rounds to get to Wembley? Yeah. Three rounds. So three, three intense rounds there'll be as well because there's some quality teams in there. But I think you know, for a player, you know, to experience, you know, playing at Wembley and having the opportunity, you know, to win the Challenge Cup, you know, in front of a huge crowd, it's just a special occasion. You know, Challenge Cup, you know, is steeped in history. You know, we can go back to when. Well, I'm going back a bit further. When I was a little <laughs> lad, you know, and it were uh, it one of the best days, you know, on Saturday, you know, and, and going. I mean, I can remember going to watch Leeds when they played St. Helens, you know, twice at Wembley in, in 70s. Yeah. You know, and it was just a, an unbelievable, you know, experience. And it sticks with you, to be honest with you. I think there were 100,000 in then, you know. So nothing's changed in regards to Challenge Cup. It's just an exceptional cup competition and... Hopefully our guys, you know, put out put, put the best performance in, you know, this year. You know, not just, you know, a week on Saturday, but Friday night as well. Two great challenges. They're the games you want to play in against the hardest, toughest, smartest teams. 100%. Only got the one Challenge Cup final win in all that career. All the success we enjoyed at the Rhinos. Just the one context is king. It's going to be a really interesting couple of weeks. I don't know what it's going to end up like. I hope you'll get right behind the team as always. Big thanks to John Bastian for joining us in Box 2. The future's bright. How do I know? Because this guy's in charge of it. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.